Hello viewers and welcome to the first portion of the Dominions Forum Multiplayer Collaborative with me, Pupu Chu. Currently it is a late spring in the year 3 of the Ascension Wars and today we'll begin our first real movements on the campaign map here. So, uh, we've, uh, we've kind of already played through um, a portion of the game, the early fat portions of the game, um, just between ourselves, uh, simply because I felt like... Um, Felt like it would have been really rather slow to show you guys the uh, the conquering of the neutral provinces and all the boring uh, early game stuff. So we we've kind of moved towards a uh, a middle point inside the game where action starts to begin. Um, so how I think we'll do this is I will do a recap of the of the last turn, seeing as how uh, for that turn I was uh, I, w I wasn't present. I was a little busy uh, yesterday, so the game actually. Uh, automatically did my turn uh, but anyhow what had happened was that we finished a uh, conjuration and we fought one battle over here um, in the meantime what has happened is that um Das, Tokshin, and Illwinter they've been pressing down over here into the areas of Cytus um, Citus, which is one of the AI factions, and we've actually found their uh, capital over here. And their capital is fairly weak, so they've been pressing an early assault there, and most of the efforts is focused on the south. In the meantime, what we'll be doing is that we'll try to hold off the uh, Abyssia advance over here. Um, the Abyssians have, or seem to have an empire just behind the mountain ranges over here, and they've, uh, they, they were passive for the majority of the game, and now they've gotten a little cocky and they've started to raid our, uh, our territory with these minor, uh, little skirmish forces. So with that kind of said, what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to, um, assign our army some troops and we're going to truly, uh, press forward here. Um, so let's begin by doing a few things with our armies. Um, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to make our armies uh, primarily made out of two units. We're going to have some archers over here, and we're also going to have some uh, some of these giant units. Now, one of the things that I should note about these giants is that oh, we have a single barbarian, which is keeping our lines from uh, being organized. Um, one of the things that we should note about these giants is that because of their size, uh, what typically happens with these guys is that they can only have, um, usually you can have three like little regular humanoids compared to one giant on the same tile. So with that kind of said, even though our giants can do a lot of damage with their swords, you can only have one of them um, on the front lines. So we do have to worry about frontage. Um, to compensate for that, what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to get our... Um, our troops, our, um, our main line of giants to assemble using the full uh, depth of the field so that we can really maximize uh, the amount of uh, damage we output per turn. Now, I have two armies really set up here. I have one small force, which I, I typically use for containment, and I also have a bigger force, which I am currently just kind of moving around and using it for, uh, for the purposes of containing the... Uh, the enemy. The small force is probably just going to go through here and it's going to produce uh, a few raids. It's going to try to pin down these Abyssians um, as best as it can to just kind of sandwich them in. Well, this my main army carries out offensives on the larger stacks of units that they have, like the fifth, like the 70 uh, units that they have here. Um, so with that said, we'll move our armies just like that to these two provinces. Uh, my setup here is that for our main army, we have two commanders, or rather one unit commander and two specialty units that we should be, um, we should note. We have the Jotun Goad here, uh, Mok Mokkerlaf. This guy is a... This guy apparently has a burning pearl, some item that he found, but this this guy, the main reason we're keeping him here is that he is a priest and he can bless units using this Sermon of Courage spell. I'm also going to get him to use the, uh, the let's see, the banishment spell here. So what he's going to do is that the priests can bless holy units or sacred units, and by distilling these blessings onto them, uh, we gain quite a lot of protection, quite a lot of uh, invigoration for our troops, meaning that our troops will be able to fight harder and for longer periods of time, provided that they have the sacred uh, trait, meaning that they will be ble they are they are able to be blessed. So with that said, the majority of our, uh, our army are made of these uh, Gurma herding people, and as you can see here, our main line is filled with them. So as soon as that uh, Jotun Goat does the Sermon of Kermage, Courage and does the uh, the banishment, that'll that'll effectively bless our troops and get rid of any undead troops that they uh, they may have spawned. 
Another thing is that I have this uh, Scratty Mage over here. Using his two Water uh, Mage levels, I can use the summon. I can use the spell Rain, and the spell Rain uh, hinders these Abyssians by quite a bit. Seeing as how Rain, um, it well, it makes the battlefield colder. And the f and as you can see here, it uh, it actually directly mentions the Abyssians as uh, one of the things that. Um, as one of the things that it's particularly effective to. So with that said, um, I'm keeping that guy with our main army, fighting these Abyssians with the rain spell active will effectively be lower uh, the Abyssians' fighting capacity by quite a lot. So that is uh, that is one thing that we're doing. Also have a secondary force here which is really just meant to contain the uh, the enemy. Might as well assign them a back uh, line of archers. And we will have a little skirmish line, just like that. These guys can be merged. And line formation again. Whoops. There we go. So these troops are also going to move forward like that. They, uh, I believe they also have a priest here. The priest is actually leading a lot of the troops right now. And again, they are using Sermon of Courage and Banishment to stave off undead and give our troops ungodly powers. So that is uh, that is one thing too. Um, back inside our keep, we're currently recruiting quite a lot of these um, gamma herding troops and Jotun axemen and whatnot, and we'll essentially continue doing that throughout the end of the game. Um, currently, we actually have two very very special commanders. We have our disciple, which is Mrs. Buttermuns, the Great Enchantress, which will currently sit inside our base and do research for the most part. Um, and that'll just kind of continue like such. And we also have uh, one person called Tajaste, uh, the abductor, which is a commander that we've just kind of picked up out of the blue. So um, Buttermans over here is a great researcher simply because of, her, uh, because of the great magical st uh, stats that she possesses. So we're going to keep her to do that. Um, the thing about this unit is that, uh, or our disciple over here, is that she can actually generate magical... Um, uh, astral pearls which is one of the more valuable magical currencies so with that said we're going to leave, leave her inside our base to do uh, to to summon units and to do high level magic spells later on um, currently to just simply because this guy has uh, air and water magic and, and death magic I feel like he's uh, he's rather useful on the battlefield he also has high health and high protection so he will be uh, definitely useful um, he is he is susceptible to fire though which is a problem but what I want him to do is that I want him to function as our uh, as our main battle army leader leader later on, as well as uh, functioning as a, uh, a magical caster. So currently, what I want to do is that I'm like currently because of the fact that the Abyssians are trying to make a push right now, I'm going to get him to lead an army, and this army will actually have plus one morale simply because he's there, and I want him to bring his troops. Um, forward in them and he'll also come over here pick up some archers and then uh, try to contain the blob over here that is Abyssia. Um, so while that's happening what I'm going to do is uh, I see that we have a stockpile of uh, death gems, nature gems, and blood slaves. Uh, currently we have quite a few uses for those uh, for those um, death gems and uh, water or nature gems. So what I, what I want to do here is that I want to revive a few units. Um, I want to get a, let's see, Call of the Wild, what does this do? Summons a werewolf and a large pack of wolves in a different province. Um, so that's a raiding spell. What I want to do here is that I want to summon a few Draugars. Um, I think, I think, I think Skyrim had these things too, but they're effectively undead troops. They're they're quite great, um, simply because they uh, they're incredibly strong and they they're apparently uh, shape shifters as well. So we're going to summon two groups of them. They're fairly expensive too, so I would imagine they're they're good. Um, but you know what? I just want to test that out and I want to get two groups of those guys out as fast as possible. Um, I think I'll get Mrs. Uh, Buttermans over here to summon a pack of uh, those wolves somewhere uh, later on. Hmm. I try doing this. I'll get her to cast this ritual spell, uh, Call of the Wild. So this will make it so that, uh, let's see, what is the maximum distance we can summon this spell at? Can we, can we put it here? No. So we have a range of four here, which makes summoning the spell a little more difficult. But I want to pluck down a Call of the Wild right here. So we'll get a swarm of uh, wolves 
in this tile and it appears to be free of an enemy units. So that'll switch that tile into our favor and we should be able to cap out these provinces as a raid tac tactic too. Um, currently we've been researching heavily into um, conjuration mainly to get those uh, specialty spells here. Um, the spells in white every single faction has, but the spells in purple letters are the ones uh, unique to our faction. So I see a lot of those right now, so uh, that's kind of why I've been pressing into this uh, um, group of spells heavily. Uh, later on, I think we'll be able to get like Aether Gate or something like that, something like that to, uh, to buff us up. Um, but currently, yeah, I just really wanted to check out these unique spells, so that's kind of why we have a high conjuration. We have level 1 alteration. I might increase this later on simply because I, I want our, our armies to be able to do this enlarge spell or something like that. Enlarged soldiers get increased hit points and strength and size, uh, making hopefully making our giants bigger and stronger. I'm also doing an uh, evocation mainly for rain, but since we already have that, I can shift priorities to something else. Um, later on, though, I do want a uh, freezing mist, which will be absolutely devastating to the Abyssians and as well as uh, some of the other spells, too. So, we're pressing over um, on those fronts, and I feel like that is really the end of my turn. So, I will see you guys uh, later on.